on this episode, we talk Starbucks cups, what you do after you've got an idea, and me changing my mind. Chuck, and this is episode 161 of the Ask Gary V Show. India is here. Huge controversy that you like weren't there in the last episode. People, people are really sad. Uh, we're outside of Columbus Circle filming the show. Uh, Thursday, Jets game, Bills. Oh, people want to be on the show. Photo bombing, photo bombing on a Early Thursday morning, New York City, an official Jets prediction yeah. coming up. I'm going to that. I'm wearing my, uh, look at this. Wait, I don't want to get wet. My, my Jets, my Jets Nikes. Uh, and we'll get to that at the end of the show. But India, let's get into the show. Bang. Let's do it. Focused. First one from Feeling fresh. I had a 23 hour day yesterday. Oh, flew wow. to Miami, then flew to Orlando, then flew to New York. It's an intense day. All right, person from Mulwick. 3.30 a.m. wake up call. Today? No, yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Mulwin asks, how do you structure a 2015 resume to stand out and sell yourself? Would you make a video? Uh, a 20, so I'm not a big fan of resumes. I, uh, I think, Interestingly enough, if you're required to use a resume to create your opportunity, you've lost. I think, uh, I think 2016 resume is networking. I think a way better j- way to get a job is to create relationships. I would, uh, I would start tweeting at uh, 10 to 20 tastemakers, influencers, important executives within the industry. You want to get a job in PR? I would follow 40 to 70 major PR executives, top three PR executives at Edelman, Hunter PR, you know, uh, those kind of things. Uh, uh, Weber Shanwick. I would follow what they would say. I would interact with them. Uh, I, would, I would request for a five minute coffee. One in every 60 of them would say yes. Uh, networking is the new resume. If you're relying on a piece of paper or a, a, a cheeky video to break through, that means that you have no leverage before you've walked into the room. Leverage, when you walk into the room on the, on the interview, is the key. Have, being hired before you walk in is the key. And I think there's a huge opportunity to do that. I mean, there's, a, there's an unbelievable phenomenon going on on Twitter, which is that you can literally get to anybody and there's a some percentage of chance that they'll actually want to engage with you. So the 2016 resume is the networking, fooled you Stefan, is the networking that you do before you walk into the building. Yeah, Thai guy likes that. Tyler, you know what? AJ's assistant Tyler, rarely on the show, never on the show, uh, doing a little scoping. All right. Periscope. Uh, from AJ. Eight from AJ? No, different AJ. Ty's boss? Yeah, Ty's boss wants to know. AJ asks, when giving 100, how do you not take defeat personally? When you're giving 100%. Yeah, you're giving 100%. Uh, Stefan, give me a 100 emoji right here, because you know I love that. Let's see what you do with that. Uh, when giving 100%, how is it possible to not take defeat personally? Yes. Uh, no, meaning like I always take defeat personally. Like if I always give 100%, but like when giving 110%, like defeat should be personal. If you do not take defeat personally, um, then you're a non-winning player. But like, sorry to get like very realistic here this morning. If you are not pissed every single time you lose, and I mean Parcheesi, I mean Madden, I mean in work, I mean when you don't even control the outcome, AKA what I'm gonna deal with. If and when the Jets lose tonight, when something I can't even control, because I'm gonna give 100 as a fan, uh, I'm gonna start fighting and being nasty to the Bills fans that I see on the way out. I want to get nasty, I want to make them uncomfortable, and I take it extremely personal. I really believe that struggling with defeat, 
being a sore loser is an absolute proxy to success. It means you care. And when you care, you fight. The reason I think I will always be great at business is I literally want to die instead of fail. Die, death, over. I do not know how to live in life. I do not know how to live in life. Live in life with an L in business on my resume. It's just, I may have micro L's, but the the ultimate L. You know that that joke I make of like, secretly I want to lose everything to rise like a phoenix? You know, I I don't even know, (laughs) yes, but boy, I'm not even sure I'm gonna get that chance because I wouldn't even know how to function in society with that loss. That's how much I care, and so you should take defeat personally, period. Jared asks, Do you think Starbucks knew their customers would overreact to the design of their new cup and did it just for marketing? The Starbucks cups. And I see Dunkin' Donuts came out with theirs and I was like, yay, yay, thank God, it's holiday. Uh, I think this was interesting. It just speaks to the world we now live in. I mean, first of all, Starbucks should be very happy that people give a crap. I mean, if you told Howard Schultz 30 years ago, one day, There'll be a national uproar, or at least a micro national uproar, to the cups that you have. Like, that is like, I hope one day that the entire world, or at least the the US market, is in an uproar on the subtle aspect of what's going on in my, and I mean the subtle, 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 get down here with me, Stefan. The subtle, 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 subtlest of things that have to do with my business, that people have that much passion. Little quick side note on this, I find it interesting that everybody's panty, a lot of my friends' panties are in a bunch I saw on social over this cup. The same homies that love the simplistic design of Apple. You know, all these homies that love, love simplistic design, right? Yeah, love it, yes, love, that kid is awesome. Love simplistic design in Apple, but here comes the simplistic design in your coffee cup, and whoa, it's not holiday enough. People just wanna complain. People love to complain. You love to complain. Complaining's easy. Complaining's easy. People love to complain. How about executing? How about, how about instead of complaining, trying to build a business that actually has people complain about it? Go do that. Thanks. Yeah. Bang. Bang. Did you catch that kid or not? You did? You caught him? Yeah. He was awesome. Yeah, was you caught his yeah? He was so chill. What do you do? Are you like focused? Me? Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, this kid. Yep. Yeah. By the way, this is insane. Last week, you were with us? I wasn't. Oh, you weren't there. You heard about this? Last week, we're walking into the Jets game and we see this band playing. And we like, we, the Jets have a thing called the Aviators, who everybody hates but me. They're like the band that plays. Like, I love them because mainly they piss off everybody else in my crew. Uh, we see these kids and Mike Ply goes, not the Aviators, and we make a joke, da da da. And then this comes through. This kid was part of that band there, so let's, let's see what's going on here. I've already forgotten who you are. Yeah, what's going on here? Hey Gary, my name is Nick Souden, and we're about to perform at MetLife Stadium with the marching band. My question to you is if you have a great idea for a business or a product, what's the next step you should take? Well, I think, uh, great question. Uh, he followed up too. Yes, I saw, he, yeah, that's right. There was a little bit of that yesterday. He followed up. I said, yeah, we got you because we already had we you. Again. And then everybody was like, oh, is that how you get on the show and all this stuff? So anyway. Um, Mitch, I think, I think it's very simple. The next step is to go and do it. Like everybody, like you and all your bandmates, all of you got good ideas. Everybody here's got a good idea. This dude's got a good idea. Like she's got a great idea. She's got a great idea. Everybody, everybody's got ideas. What you do next is you make it happen. Maybe you quit band and you go make it happen. Maybe you go ask money from your Uncle Milton and that's how you make it happen. I don't know, maybe you find a partner that can build your app. Uh, You go to meetups, you've gotta make it happen. I don't know if that's money, that's time, that's a partner that can actually build out what you need, but the answer always, youngster, is go and make it happen. The ideas, the thoughts are nice, I always say ideas are shit, execution's a game. I say that on purpose. I'm actually gonna use this video as a class, uh, a clarification. Uh, Stefan, cut this out because I'm gonna need it because everybody gets mad at me and they're not wrong. Of course, you gotta have a, you know, great idea is a great idea. It's just there's so many of those. There's so many great ideas. There's way less great executions. There are the 7,000 greatest ideas of all time never saw the day of light. They just haven't because execution's hard.
And that, and that's the key. And so, yes, ideas are, are amazing. And I'm sure your idea is wonderful. But I equally believe that everybody's ideas are wonderful. There's a lot of great ideas that are wonderful. And that, ex- I mean, I've seen a hell of a lot more people execute very below average ideas to build amazing lives. There's, there's unlimited multi-million dollar companies. People have made millions of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, had tremendous success in business on executing an average idea. You know what's an average idea? A social and digital agency. That's a, that's a below average idea. It worked. Like, yeah. it's, it's good. It allows AJ to have Tyler uh, as an employee. So, I, I think that, uh, I think that's the key to that question. Mike asks, what have you changed your mind about in the last six months? Oh, I saw this come through. Good one, India. Mike, what have I changed my mind about in the last six months? As you can tell, this is hard for me because uh, what have I changed my mind about? Um, it's hard. I, I, I think the only thing that comes to mind is I will tell you that I'm in constant motion with Vayner Media around culture, around skill, around offerings, around people. I've changed my mind on people, both pro and con. Uh, but there hasn't been anything massively philosophical. I stay pretty consistent with my seven, 10, 15 key pillars. Uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, you know, I'll save that. Uh, uh, yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing really so unbelievable other than um, when you're the CEO of a company, you're slightly pulling levers at all times, and at some level you could say you're changing your idea. Again, around strategies, around opportunities, uh, publishing, uh, you know, building out the Vayner publishing stuff. I, I've changed a lot of different strategies because the market's moving. Uh, virtual reality, I'm way more into it than I was. That could be a change of an idea. It's more of an acceleration of idea. There's been no hard like, oh, I believe that. You know, actually, this is an interesting time to open this up. I'd be lying if I didn't say this. Maybe it's because my 40th birthday is coming in two days. Um, I have secretly, for the first time in my life, thought about the notion of, in the next decade, taking an entire year off and not working at all. Yeah, that's, that, that's a bomb, right? That's a real, that's a bomb. Uh, but we'll see, we'll see. But you know what? I've consistently been where there's smoke, there's fire kind of guy. And I don't mean like shut down from social and like weird stuff. I mean like just, I don't know, move the family to like Sydney, Australia and let the kids spend the year there and just like zen it out. Uh, and like get real, real buff. Uh, and I wanna, I wanna stretch more. Anyway, official, official Jets prediction. The New York Jets are very hurt. We're on our fourth safety, fourth. Safety. The Buffalo Bills are getting healthy. The Jets won by five points against a Jags team that hadn't won a road game in 12 games after they won the turnover battle four to zero. Four to zero, they won by five points. I think Buffalo's getting healthier. I think we're extremely banged up. We, uh, we lost our, one of our guards for the year. Uh, our center, Nick Bangold, is banged up. Uh, all of our receivers are banged up. Our quarterback's thumbs banged up. We are a one banged up, banged up team. I see disaster for my New York Jets tonight. It, I mean, it crushes me to say this, but I think we get pretty handled. I'm, I'm, I think we get blown out. I actually really do, which just sucks. But I think the Jets lose tonight uh, 29 to 10. Um, yeah. Yeah. You keep asking, oh, question of the day. Because I'm bringing that back. Question of the day. Uh, since that really just hurt my feelings, what's the last thing that you've had to say out loud that really disappointed you? You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna fix my prediction. I just thought about it a little bit more. I think the Jets are gonna score a little more than I think. I'm changing it, first time. First time change. I'm going 31-16, Buffalo. Thanks, brother. What's that? Thank you. Oh, you are? Yeah. Awesome, what's your name? I'm Allie. Hi, Allie. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Thanks for yes, watching. I came to see the stars. It's my favorite awesome. of the holidays. Yes, it's really what cool. What are you saying about Starbucks cups? 
I said that people are, I said a couple things. I said one, it's amazing to have a business where people give a shit about that. And two, it's funny to me that so many of my friends that love Apple's simplicity are mad about the simplicity of this cup. So yeah, right? I, I just talked about people complaining. And now Dunkin' Donuts has a cup. I saw that, I mentioned that. It's so. kind of lame looking. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. We're talking about it. Nice yeah, to meet you. Take care. To see you.